what? Over there. It, it's at finds, I think. Oh, oh, oh. Your eyes are just playing tricks on you. I wish they wouldn't. If you hadn't forgotten the lantern, we could see where we were going. Who needs a lantern? Oh. <clears throat> we're lost, aren't we? Who says we're lost? This is exactly where we were the last time we came through here. I think. What if there's a monster out there? I wish we could see where we were going. If we could see a monster, then it could see us now, couldn't it? I, I think it already can, Rosa. <laughs> should carry a light when you're out at night. I told you so. Where are you going, Theo? To the church to prepare for the evening service. Can we help too, please? Help? Why, uh, <laughs> certainly, lads, certainly. Carrying a light at night is good counsel for humans too. The world is a dark place. By that, I mean spiritually dark. But God has not left us without light to guide and protect us. God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Did you know that Jesus is the light of the world? The Bible helps us to know how to walk in his light. It teaches us right from wrong and how to avoid spiritual obstacles. Thy word is a lamp to my feet, O oh Lord, thy word is a light to my way. It shines in my soul like a star by night, and comforts and cheers me by day. <sighs> the Bible is an amazing book. It is our Creator's training manual, as it were, that gives us everything we need to live godly lives that please Him. Unfortunately, some people think of the Bible as just another piece of literature. There are those, of course, who try to suppress it. Sadly, there are those who rarely open it. But the Bible is the very word of God, every word of it. It is God-breathed and tastes sweeter than honey to our souls. Here is a shoebox Bible theater episode about young King Josiah, who discovered that God's word can never be hidden. When King Ammon ruled in Judah, it was a very dark time in Israel's history. He was a wicked king, even more so than his father, King Manasseh. And both kings displeased the Lord very much. Like his father, King Ammon disobeyed God's word by worshipping false gods made of wood and stone instead of the one true God of Israel. The priests in Judah were wicked also, worshipping the false gods of the Canaanites. 
Neither did they worship God in the temple of Jerusalem, as he had commanded them. But instead, they worshipped in various high places where God had strictly forbidden them to worship. The Bible tells us that the temple had long been abandoned and had fallen into ruin. God had commanded that the temple be the center of worship for his people a place where he would display his glory, as he had done centuries earlier when King Solomon first built the temple. But King Ammon and the religious leaders of his day did not follow God's word. Instead, they discarded it in one of the rooms in the temple, no longer finding it necessary. In time, God's word was completely forgotten. Yes, it was a very dark time. After the death of wicked King Haman, his eight-year-old son Josiah was made king over Judah. The Bible says that King Josiah did what was right in the sight of God. Even as a boy, he wanted to serve God with all his might, just as his ancestor King David had done before him. When he was a young man, he began to tear down the high places that his father had built, and he burned the idols of false worship. When he was 26 years old, Josiah commanded that the temple be restored and that worship of the one true God resume. The priests and workmen immediately began working to bring the temple back to its former beauty. They carried out the idols left there by the false priests that ministered under Josiah's wicked father. They restored the furniture in the holy place and the altar in the outer court of the temple. During the time of restoration, Hilkiah, the high priest, discovered an amazing treasure, one that had been hidden for many years. The book of the law of Moses that had been lost and forgotten was found. When Hilkiah read the lost book to Josiah, the king was greatly distressed and tore his garments. He realized that Judah had not obeyed God's word for many years, and that because of it, God was very displeased with his people. Josiah obeyed everything written in the book of the law. He completely drove out the false priests and their idols of wood and stone cleansing the land from religious practices that God hated. He also reinstituted the Passover and celebrated it like no other king before him or after him. The Bible says that there was no king in Israel like Josiah, neither before him nor after him. For Josiah turned to the Lord with all his heart, with all his soul, and with all his might, according to the word of God. King Josiah pleased the Lord by reading God's word and obeying it. If you've never read the Bible, why not start reading it today? See how it will shed light to your path and guide every step of your way. Ready, lads? Ready! Oh, wonderful, wonderful world, my treasure, my hope, and my stay. Each promise recalls that delights my soul and brightens each step of my way. What are you doing, Belfry? Theo said the Bible is a lamp unto our feet. Now we can see where we're going at night. See? Oh, yes, I can see clearly now. <laughs> <laughs>